Panametrics PT868 flow meter as supplied by Tech Rentals. The kit contains the following elements. The flow meter, power supply for the flow meter, couplant, transducers, analog I.O. cable, RS-232 cable. Transducer cables to collect, connect the flow meter to the transducers. The fixture, both parts of the fixture. Test certificate from Tech Rentals and the appropriate manuals. In order to program the flow meter, you'll need to know the following parameters. We need to know the pipe diameter, the wall thickness, the type of material the pipe is made out of, the type of material flowing through the pipe, and the approximate temperature of the pipe wall and the approximate temperature of the material flowing through the pipe. In order to program up the flow meter, we have to enter in a number of parameters into the flow meter. The flow meter then calculates a spacing for us to mount the transducers on the pipe. And we'll go through that procedure. Firstly, we need to turn the system on. Now push the on key. Right. While the system's booting, it takes a couple of seconds. I'll explain some of the features on the keyboard. We have these keys down here which bring up various menus, soft function keys across the top, there's an enter key, up arrow, down arrow will move us around menus, upper menu line, down a menu line, left and right will move us through these function keys, we've got an exit key. Now, the function, the, the system's now booted so we have our function keys up. This key here lines up with the F1 function, F2, F3, F4. You'll notice that there is a small arrow in the upper right hand corner here. When that arrow is present, we can hit the left and right arrow keys here, and they will give us, we can bring up various additional menu items. Now, in order to program up this meter, firstly we hit the program button. This will take us into the program area. We've got various functions available in this area, but basically we need to set up the pipe. So if we hit F3. Now all of the systems we supply are supplied with type 113 transducers so we can either enter 113, press enter, or we could have pushed down arrow or we could have pushed enter. All the systems are supplied with fixed wedge temperature inputs so we accept that. Now the wedge temperature is the basically the temperature of the outside of the pipe. It's a fairly warm day today so 20 degrees is probably quite adequate. We can either type a new temperature in or just push enter. Now the pipe material in this instance is plastic but there are various other choices available because you can see there's this arrow up here. So we could hit the left and right arrow and select various items. Now in this case it is a plastic pipe so I can either hit F4 or the enter key to accept the fact that it's already got plastic up there. So I'll just push F4. Now it gives us a couple of choices with the plastic PVC etc and that happens to be correct so I'll push enter. Now we, uh, the system asks for the pipe outside diameter. In this case 63 millimeters so again 63 enter. The wall thickness is 4 millimeters so again I can hit 4 then enter. Now the pipe is not lined if the pipe was lined you would, this is, you'd enter yes and then put in the type of pipe lining material but in this instance it's not. I go enter tracking windows? No. Now the fluid type in this instance is water. Again you'll notice there's the arrow in the upper right hand corner so there are various other options available. If you don't have, if the option isn't available we can go to this other key F3 and then manually enter the sound speed in that material. In this case it's water so I can either hit F1 or just enter to accept it and it's normal water which is again F1. Now the water temperature again, 20 degrees is about correct today. So I hit enter. Now the Reynolds correction factor, if you switch the Reynolds correction factor on, it's, it's generally advisable to. In this instance, um, 
because we're operating with water at 20 degrees C, it happens to be one. The instrument actually calculates the Reynolds correction factor for the um, fluids which are um, programmed into it. So I'm going to do standard Reynolds correction, which is F2. And the kinematic viscosity, the system's calculated that. It happens to be that the kinematic viscosity of water at 20 degrees C is 1.00. Calibration factor. If the system has a um, requires a calibration factor other than 1.0, it will be printed on the side of the instrument. There will be a, a label on the side, it'll be mentioned on this little calibration certificate. In this instance, it's 1.00. So I'll enter enter. Now, the number of traverses. With regard to the number of traverses, firstly, we have a transducer mounted on this side. Now, a single traverse, the signal will just simply go straight across the pipe like this. So we'll put our second transducer. We'll have it mounted on the opposite side of the pipe. Now, this arrangement is often difficult. Now, if we have a double traverse, the signals come back here. We can mount our transducer on this side. With the triple it's over here. With four traverses, it's back over there. Use the greater you, the greater the problems you have with um, contaminants in the pipe, such as air, etc., the more susceptible it is. But the idea, just for simplicity's sake, you try and operate with two traverses. Now, if you've got a narrow pipe, you may find, for example, the pipe's only this wide here. You may find that the signal will go across and come back, and there won't be enough room to mount the two tra two transducers. So we may have to go to four, and that's the case. Um, and we've got a 63mm diameter pipe. Now if we select two traverses in this instance, so hit F2, that gives us a spacing of 49.6. Now given the size of the particular transducers, it's just simply not far enough. They'd, um, they'll just run into each other. So we have to go back now to fix that error. We can simply push the up arrow and that will take us back to the previous menu here. Right, in this instance, we'll enter four traverses. All right, here, here four, number four, 93.8 millimeters. That's the spacing we need to write that figure down. It's an important figure. So for the particular 63 mil diameter plastic pipe, four millimeter wall spacing, 20 degrees C water, 20 degrees C pipe temperature, the spacing is 93.8. Now we continue with one more enter and that will take us back to our starting point where we select pipe, selected the pipe. Now to exit out of here we push the exit key but we haven't saved the program. So push exit. Do you want to save the program? Yes. So hit F2. Say so yes. Now I've got to give it a name. Now in this case uh, TR Lab could be anything. We can have, uh, usually you sort of enter something like for example 6.3 and it's plastic pipe so I hit the red key followed by the um, print key gives us a P that's it so just use any name enter now we've saved it now we can hit exit it'll take us out now it'll start trying to set that particular pipe up now we have we're not on a pipe yet so it won't be able to find anything I'll turn the system off and we'll go and set the jig up on the pipe. I have now mounted the fixture on the 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock position on the pipe and I've set the, trend, the fixture spacing at the 93.8. You'll notice on the side of the transducers there is an actual scribed line. That 93.8 is the distance between those transducers. We squeeze a little bit of Couplant onto the uh, transducers, just a bit of a blob, not too much, not too little, just a bit of a blob. And then put the transducers into the fixture and tighten the fixture onto them. And carefully let it slid right in. Right. And put the second transducer into the fixture. That up. All right, now we've got those two mounted. 
If there's power available, you then plug power into the back of the, uh, the flow meter. Flow meter should last about eight hours on battery. Plug our transducer cables in, firstly into the back, and the other end into the transducer. And if these are back to front, doesn't matter much. We just get a negative number and we just got to reverse them. That's the first one in. Here's the second one. Plug that in there. Grab the other end of it. And come up, connect it up here. Now we need to turn the system back on to get things going, just to show the rig completed. I now have the flow meter, uh, and I have the flow rig running. Now I'll turn the system back on again, so I'll press the on button. Now the unit will come up and we'll, it will uh, attempt to um, get that program that we loaded in earlier going. So we've entered the 90, we've set the transducers at the appropriate spacing and we've plugged them in. Now we're just waiting for the system to come up. Velocity. Just waiting for it to come up. There we go. The negative number shows that we've got the transducer cables the wrong way around. Very simple to fix. You just simply reverse the cables. You'll see what happens anyway. If I remove this cable and remove that cable, the instrument will keep measuring correctly. We can leave it out a minute and you'll see it'll get a an error in a minute. Pop this one back in again. Now yeah, sound speed error, it's thrown an error. Yeah. Velocity range, etc. will be upset for a couple of seconds. Amplitude. It's waiting. Signal quality, here we are, no errors. Correct reading and bang. Reverse the reading. We can actually have a look at what the signal actually looks like here. If I hit display, it comes up with this menu, we've got this right arrow up here, so I hit the right arrow there, and I can actually look at the signal, and I hit F1. Wait for a second for it to settle. That's a good signal, an example of a good signal anyway on the fly meter. Now, to show you what occurs when we have a fault in the system, i.e. we have too much air, I'll let a bit of air into the pipe. Now you can hear the tone of the flow meter change, and if you look at the pipe, you can see the air coming through. Now we can watch what happens to the signal here, there, at fault. And if we exit from here, we can come out and that'll be throwing an error. Now I close the pipe off starts to take some of the air out of the system. There's still a lot of air in the system. You can see it coming by. This will still throw an error. And we can go back and have a look and see what goes on here. The actual signal, right arrow again, and hit signal F1. Now you can see that it doesn't look as nice as it did before, but you can see that signal forming within it as the percentage of uh, air gradually reduces. And if we come back out here, this will eventually say no errors quite happily. There we are, no errors. So if we come back and have a look at the uh, hit display, right arrow, F1, there it is there. You can see it's starting to form the signal as we had it before. Yep, there it is, flopping around the place still, but not too bad. Now the fly meter, a couple of things about the fly meter, it doesn't respond very quickly. It uh, smooths the measurements, so to look at the response time, I'll just turn the flow rig off and give us a, a zero flow. So we hit the button on the flow rig. All right, let's see how quickly it responds. There would be some element of movement in the water, but not that much. There we go, we're down to zero. So that's the sort of response time you can get out of the fly meter, which isn't bad. 
Phanometrix PT868 represents a very fast, simple and accurate method of determining flow in pipes. It's simple because we simply enter the pipe parameters. From that we determine, uh, using the help of the flow meter, we determine the spacing of these transducers. We simply mount them on the outside of the pipe and we have a flow. You know when to believe the instrument and when not to believe the instrument. If it's throwing an error, you don't believe the numbers. If it says no errors, they're quite accurate. It's a very simple, fast method for flow measurement.